<laughs> oh my god. Oh, I didn't wonder my plans yet. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna do it. We're doing it. We're doing it. <sighs> I didn't expect this kind of reaction, this kind of physical reaction. So this week, this day, this video, I'm gonna be doing my makeup, okay? Cool, easy, no problem. So get ready with me. Let's get ready to go nowhere because I'm gonna immediately take it off after. But what makes it specific to me is I'm gonna do it without my wig on, which is a little nerve wracking because <laughs> it's just a big step that I've never taken. In the spirit of you know, being a grown up, being mature, being comfortable with oneself, I think it's important that I do this because, oh my God, my face is gonna get red. Oh my God. Be <laughs> because it's whatever. It's a part of me. I deal with it every day of my life. So let's just do it. Let's show it to the world. It's just fucking hair, but I'm gonna keep rambling to postpone actually doing it. <laughs> so that's not all we're doing is like just like me silent, bald, doing my makeup. Some people might be into that. There's probably a fetish site for that. Ugh. That's the nerves, nervous burps. But I'm also going to be talking about alopecia, what it is, answering some questions, um, telling my story about living with it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's gonna just be an informative, get ready with me. I just have to do it. Like, oh my God. That's it, there, it's done. This is my bald head in all its bald glory. I look like an alien. I'm aware of that. It's kind of cool. Kind of like being able to just go full alien if I want to. But let's get into the rest of it. The meat. Okay, so I'm just gonna be doing my makeup like I would kind of just for filming. So it's more than I would wear on a like day to day. This is vodka, kidding. So first things first, this. That's what happens when it's no wig. My glasses, like they just, there's nothing holding them on. My head's too small. Got a little, I got a little bean, a little egg. So, oh, there's another part of this. No glasses. Yeah, I know, I look weird. I kind of look like Voldemort or those like aliens from Galaxy Quest or um, the Queens of the Stone Age. No, not that. Queen's album. I can't remember the name of it, but it's featured in Family Guy and I'll put it somewhere. I know, I don't have eyebrows, I don't have eyelashes. It's my face. This is my face. But let's slap some makeup on it, shall we? It's so normal to me. Like I look at the mirror and I'm like, oh yeah, that's my face. So, all right, so first things first. What is alopecia? What is alopecia? Alopecia is a autoimmune, like we'll say disorder, where your white blood cells are little itty bitty assholes and they're just confused physically, maybe sexually, I don't know. So they take it out on your body by attacking your hair follicles. Your hair falls out. There's no real like rhyme or reason like there's no finite rhyme or reason as to why, when, like why it's happening, when it's gonna happen, um, why it happened. <laughs> I'm just putting down like a base layer right now, by the way, on my eyes. I do my eye makeup first because if I, I don't understand how people put on foundation first because then I'm just like smudging it around the whole time and then I, I'm done, like there's no foundation on my face. Uh. I did a whole like type up so I would be able to keep my train of thought, but I can't even see it without my glasses on. <laughs> There's no real like when it's gonna happen. I'm gonna move this over here. For when I'm gonna lose my hair, like 
Do I know like, oh, it's gonna get bad because of X, Y, and Z in my life? No, I've never been able to like pinpoint why or when it's gonna happen. I think some people might develop it because of stress, but I think with mine, I've just, I got it or it appeared at such a young age. It's never been something that's been like finite, like this is gonna happen kind of thing. Sometimes it's hormonal, like I think women can get it when they're pregnant and they're going through pregnancy, they can lose their hair and I think it's alopecia related, but um, oftentimes it, it just goes away. Like that's a lot of immune things too. Like they're, they're not always forever. Sometimes they're forever and they're just in a, they're so mysterious. <laughs> they're so mysterious because a lot of immune things like doctors don't really know definitively why. More and more research is coming forward that a lot of immune things um, can be related to your diet. Your microbiome um, can be a big contributor to immune disorders because of leaky gut, uh, essentially. If you have leaky gut, there's like a more technical term, scientific term for it, but if you have leaky gut, all the bad stuff in your intestines, the poop and the pee, uh, anyway, all of that stuff is kind of seeping out into your body where it shouldn't be. And that can cause um, you to have different kind of immune disorders. I don't know if that's why I have mine. Like I honestly don't know. The more and more leaky gut stuff is saying it can be a contributor to like almost e almost everything wrong with you. Like st um, stress, anxiety, depression, immune stuff, ADHD, like all of this stuff if your microbiome's malfunctioning, your whole body will. Um, and there's like, a, obviously there's a little more to it than that. But the more I learn, the more it seems like that could be the biggest contributor. I don't think anyone came here for a TED talk about your microbiome. However, I do strongly urge if you're having trouble with immune stuff, anxiety, depression, like mental things, there's a brain gut link that can cause these things. I strongly urge you to do more research into it. Like Brain Maker is a good book, um, The what Whale's Protocol. And then the biggest one is, that I've learned a lot from recently is the longevity paradox. Um, so there are different types of alopecia. There is alopecia areata. It's in the name. It's just areas of your body. Like it's more patchy, um, which I've, I've had that where I've had like a head of hair, but then there's been little patches here and there that are bald or my arms, I used to have arm hair, and <laughs> I actually had the nickname at one point, Patchy, from a few of my friends, um, just as a joke, because like it, it is funny. Don't your eyes see the humor in it, it's funny. Um, my eyelashes, I'd have like a full eyelash and then zero, or my eyebrows, at one point in high school, I just had one eyebrow and then one none. There was this one guy who like, I'm gonna talk bad about him because like he made fun of me, so like he can fuck himself even though even though I th he's probably a damaged person. So he said like mean things and it was high school, so who actually cares? But he can go fuck himself. <laughs> anyway, um, I thought he was cute, maybe. He dated girls that were like so much younger than us. It was looking back kind of weird. He was weird, but he was cute, you know? Well, how am I to know? I was like 15, I think. Anyway, so my friend asked like if he would ever date me and he said, she only has one eyebrow. <laughs> Cause that's when I still had hair. I actually had a full head of hair at that point. Um, and it mainly was just in my face. So I had only had one eyebrow and then some sparsity with my eyelashes. But other than that, there were no tells. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he said I only had one eyebrow. <laughs> well. This is for you. The next one up, let's say, is um, universe, no, alopecia totalis. So that's where it more so, it only really affects your scalp. I think I could be butchering this. I did a very quick like look online before I did this. I, be I believe totalis more so just affects your scalp. And then there's to un alopecia universalis, which is what I currently have. So it's like, I don't have any hair on my body really, except like, one like little beauty mark hair and some nose hair and like some hair down there. 
I said alopecia areata is a patchy bitch. Totalis really affects the scalp, mainly affects the scalp. Universalis, you're a hairless ale. Also, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you like what products I'm using while I do my makeup. Um, probably all expired. One I think is like, shouldn't even have been produced in Canada because I don't know that it's um, been like okay health wise. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just not very important. I'm not like a fucking beauty guru, booty guru. I just do my makeup sometimes, that's it. So yeah, don't come here to learn anything about makeup. Cause we just learned about alopecia today. Why do people get alopecia? I don't know. I kind of went over it a bit. Um, I really have no idea why I got it. Um, my mom says it's because um, she had Epstein-Barr, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Epstein-Barr virus when I was in her womb. So that could have contributed to it. There are a lot of, um, birth things that can happen like if you are a cesarean baby which i was if your mother like smokes or eats unhealthy when you're in the womb you don't get the right bacteria when you're born so you might have problems with your immune system and stuff like that as you age um i was a c-section baby i don't think my mom's i'm possible my mom didn't smoke when i was in the womb i'm not blaming anyone it's not her fault um this is just like maybes as to why i have it Instead of a pencil eyeliner or liquid, I use the little pot because because I don't have eyelashes. Um, I have, if I just line like the top of my eye, like where most people would and not the water line, it's just like this pink line. So it's very apparent. Like, why is that line pink? There should be black. There should be eyelashes there. There should be some kind of color, but there's only pink. There's only Caucasian skin. Um, so I use this little pot because it, it'll just stay on longer that way. Probably not good for my eye. Uh, and no, I would never get tattoo makeup on because it's my face. It's fine that it looks the way it does. Yes, this is nerve wracking to do because it is so abnormal, but it's also like fine. It's whatever. It's how my face looks when I fucking wake up. And it's all just gonna melt away one day into like old. Okay, next on the docket. Oh, my story of alopecia. That's easy to tell. I don't have to look anything up for that. <laughs> my alopecia first, it first appeared when I was eight years old. Um, I came, I remember vividly. I came in from playing outside. It was winter, recess, come inside. I had this midi on. I think it was like blue or purple. I had my midi. And I was taking off my boots in the hall and I, I, I brushed my face for whatever reason. I had like snow on my face or water. And uh, I looked down at my glove and there was like five eyelashes. And I was like, well, that, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I, I knew that wasn't like normal. So I told my mom, like there could have, maybe after that I was losing more and more. I just remembered that moment telling my mom and then we went to the doctor. But like I said, there could have been kind of more in between that. It was eight, I don't know, that's like 22 years ago, 23. Three. So yeah, go to the doctor. Uh, doctor recommends me to a dermatologist. Dermatologist sucks. Close to retirement and older, and mind you this was 1997-ish. So like in the realm of immune and nutrition, all that stuff. There just wasn't the same kind of knowledge there is now. Yeah, he, I think maybe diagnosed it was alopecia, but when it came to like treatment, it just sucked, let's say. Anyway, he literally talked like this all the time. Like he would always just be like, and I was like, I am eight. I don't know what you're saying. You're old and it scares me. I want to go home. <laughs> I can't talk and do this part. Like I just can't. So I did go to some like nutritionists, some other dermatologists and stuff like that as the years went by. Um, and then eventually as from like, so your grade three, I think I was in grade three when I was eight. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, <laughs> so from grade three to like grade seven, um, more fell out of my face and then I had areata at that point. So I had some patches on my scalp here and there. So the weird thing about alopecia too is your hair will fall out um, and then it can grow back in. Like it doesn't, you're not just like, I have alopecia, 
one day and then the next day you're this. That's not how it works. It's a very bizarre disorder, whatever you want to call it, malfunction. Um, yeah, like I, it took me years to get to this. <laughs> it's an achievement. <laughs> it was only the Ariata. Even grade eight, it was still a little patchy. And then for whatever reason, hormones, I don't really know. It just, my hair fully grew in. Yeah, so from grade, say like end of grade eight to grade, end of grade 11, I had like a full head of hair, as I said. Um, I had some weirdness in my face, but, and then the, some patches like here and on my legs and stuff. But like, I had leg hair, I had arm hair, I had pit, pube. I had hair everywhere. It was just a, a hint of areata from like, like face down. My scalp didn't have it, which was like, it was awesome, honestly, like it was great. Could put my hair up, not feel weird. Um, I, I don't want this to be a video of like, oh, Julie just complains about her childhood because it's, again, it's not like a sob story. It's not, I'm like, a, not a victim of it. It's an unfortunate thing in my life, but it's part of what makes me who I am. So you gotta live with it. Um, but with that being said, um, in grade seven, I was like, I don't wanna hide this, okay? I'm sick of like hiding it. And like kudos to like 12 year old me, like, I think she was ballsier than I am now. But <laughs> anyway, so I really like the hair. I don't know why, but oh, it was the 90s. So I like that hairstyle where you like put your hair in a little pony and then you clip up the hair. It was like a very like, they did it in Friends a lot and stuff like that. So you clip it up. So then it's like, I'll try and find a picture. Anyway, um, but I had a bald spot like right at the back of my head. So if I did that, you could see it. But I was like, I don't care. I'm doing it. This is me. <laughs> Pretty sure it was this one girl, but it, it, it was kind of a rumor around the whole school, was that I had cancer and that's why I had the patch. And I was like, I get it, you're 12. You don't understand really. Nobody really asked me, like maybe a few of my good friends knew, but like no one understood. Um, so yeah, I had cancer, whatever. Um, and then when I, <laughs> when I told, when I was in uh, 10th grade, 10th or 11th, and I told my friend that, um, he was <laughs> He was so upset and he was like, you don't get bald spots from having cancer. You get it from chemo. Like, don't they know anything? <laughs> I was like, I love that. It's, it's the best way to be upset about it. It's like, you, you don't check your facts. <laughs> all in all though, I didn't like get bullied that hard over it or anything. There was like a few things like that. Or yeah, like again, like people maybe thought it was weird. Pretty sure this is expired, but whatever. Uh, people thought there's there something weird about me, but in general, I was just a weird person anyway. So I was like, fuck it, lean into it. Like I'm weird. I have hair, no hair in places. That's me. Suck my dick. The summer of grade 11, the summer like after grade 11 ended. I don't know how to explain this. So I was about to go into grade 12. I was 16, so I was at my job at the time, at a mini golf course, and I remember sitting there and I felt my head and I felt a little patch forming. S sucks, you know, sucks. So I was, I remember like I, I, I felt panicky. I was like, yeah, teenager, going back into high school last year, felt my hair falling out again. But I was like, just like praying. I was like, let this just be Ariadna. Like, let it just be one spot. School starts, it's not just one spot. My whole head starts falling out. Um, it was, it's like, it's not like it just is again, like you lose one hair one day and then the next day you're like fucking bald. Um, so many beeps in this video. It's a slower progression than that. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like throughout the year. So I had a few in like September, I had a few spots growing and then probably by like, school goes to June, so long. Probably by like March, February, March, cause I remember it was cold and I was wearing like toques a lot. It was like, I feel so mean to say about yourself, but it was like creepy old, like, greasy man from a horror movie like it or like 
Phantom of the Opera, when he pulls off, like, when she pulls off his wig, uh, toupee, and, like, he's, like, got sparse hair. Anyway, that's what it looked like. It, I still had hair, but it was, like, just little pieces everywhere, basically. I don't know if this did anything. I don't know how to use bronzer. Yeah, so I ended up wearing, like, hats and stuff a lot like that, like, just, like, covering it up any way I could, because there was some, like, part of me that was like, if I have to start wearing a wig like that, that's like me throwing in the towel. Like, I don't know. It just, it felt like the next stage and one, like accepting it. And I don't know, just like something to be embarrassed about. Like I have to wear a wig. Like it's just going to be, I thought it was going to be so obvious. Anyway, yada, yada, yada. So I got, I was in competitive dance at the time. So I got a wig simply for competitive because I was like, well, I can't wear like a fucking hat out on stage. I can't be like, even though she would have, but I couldn't say to my dance teacher, can we wear like hats in every dance? So I got a wig for that. Anyways, they were all amazing. They like, you know, changed their hairstyles that we would do on stage so that it would like, I could do it and blah, blah, blah. So they were great. Um, people in my life close to me were really great. Honestly, all my close friends were like always really sweet to me. But again, like I also, I'm not, blaming people who have shitty friends, but I surround myself with good people. Like if someone was an asshole, I just like, I just wouldn't be friends with them. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so I didn't really like get bullied in high school for it. There was only one thing. And if I talk about it, I might cry because it's like a mix of like sadness. Do your makeup and then well up. That's super what you want. It's just a mix of sadness and like kindness and like, I don't like people pitying me and I could just kind of see like the pity in people's eyes, which I didn't like. But yeah, there was one day where like, it was my friend, um, but like within my circle of friends, we just, it's how I am. We just like rip on each other and I like that, but um, I just didn't know he was crossing the line. I didn't really like, express that to him so he kept joking he didn't he didn't know he was wasn't in the close close circle he was just in the group of friends I, I hung out with he didn't know I was losing my hair and I was like how could you not know too but just because like my hair was getting even with the hat on you could tell it was so thin but anyway he didn't know um and he kept trying to rip my hat off and I was like stop like I was just kind of like please like don't do that like I but I didn't express to him in a way that I should have he just thought it was all jokes he's kind of weird anyway but <laughs> again I'm not trying to just rip on him um so he I was walking down the hall <laughs> of course it was like the end of the fucking day so everyone's in the hall and he like ripped by me or something like so I couldn't see and he pulls my hat off and it's again it's like that like really sparse, greasy, thin looking hair. So he pulls off my, my hat and I just like, I see the look on his face. He just looks like, he's like shocked. Cause of course you would be. It's like, you're expecting someone with a full head of hair. Um, but he drops the hat and then my friend walks by at the same time. Oh, when you just think it's gonna be an informative fun video. So my friend, my friend walks by and he, it's like at the, you know, he sees a hat on the ground and he, and this is like within seconds. Like, it's not like this long drawn out thing. It just like feels way longer. So he bends down, he picks up the hat and he hands it to me. And the, just the look on his face was just like, so compassionate, but also just like so sad. And it was, anyway, it was, it sucked. Anyway, so my friend who ripped the hat off, he's just like apologizing. And I was just like, I think I told him to f off or something. I mean, of course, like, <laughs> and so I take the hat from my friend. I said, thank you. And I was really ever talked about it again. Like, I think my friend who ripped the hat off, like came to me the next day and like apologized um, a bunch of times. And eventually I, I forgave him, but it was like, he didn't know, but it was, it was hard to forgive him. Cause I just like, I just wanted to tell him to go f himself. <laughs> like, but again, it's not his fault. Um, it's just how we were. Um, and then, yeah, the guy who gave me my hat back, like just 
didn't really say anything about it again. And what I still to this day find bizarre, and don't get me wrong, there could have been like behind the curtains talks, let's say, like, oh, behind my back. That's the word I want. <laughs> but no, nobody else ever said anything to me. Like people in the hall who might have seen. Um, yeah, I never got, <laughs> I never got outwardly bullied or even like heard about like horrible rumors or anything. It was like weirdly nice. I'm more just like surprising. So that was high school. Um, so by the time I finished high school, I was completely like hairless everywhere. I don't even think I had pubes, like <laughs> no pit hair, nothing. Yeah, so then when I would dance and have to wear the, the wig, I just kind of like, I just got into the habit of, of just wearing it all the time. At one point I just was like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna wear this. And I, I like the wig. I always will cherish it, but like, I don't know why I picked, I wanted a short wig. I guess actually let's just get into the next portion, which is just like wig cut. Uh, <laughs> so when I first bought, started buying wigs, I went to like a, a store. It was like a beauty salon that like sold them, like sep like sold them out of the salon, but had like its own separate kind of like area to do it in because for white women buying a wig is usually like you have alopecia, you have something wrong with your immune system or you have cancer. Like it's not a regular thing within the white community. If this were the black community, everyone would be like, why are you even talking about wigs? Like it's so normal that it's like not worth even mentioning. <laughs> so like, thanks white skin. No, I'm totally kidding. But anyway, um, so yeah, they had this like separate area where they would sell wigs to women. And this was like 20, or sorry, this is 2007. Um, so the internets and ordering things online and all that is like just, just kind of starting. So I didn't even think to look online. Um, so yeah, my mom took me to a place. Well, I think her name is Kathy. She's so fucking nice, okay? So nice. Um, why did I start crying about Kathy now? <laughs> So she showed me a selection of wigs. I thought it, I think I wanted a short one because one, it would be easier to maintain. Two, it would make more sense with the length my hair was at, blah, blah, blah. So it would make more sense if my hair got shorter rather than longer. And I was just petrified of like people knowing, talking about it, any of those things. So I was like, I'll just go shorter. So I don't really like the style that I chose, but I don't, it doesn't matter. Again, it got me to the place where I needed to go. Um, so yeah, I started wearing wigs then, and then just continued. <laughs> um, the next two wigs I got after that were real hair, and they're like, a real hair wig is so sexy, so amazing. I don't know what else to put on my face. I guess let's do a little under eye. But they are expensive. I don't want that one. Let's do this one. They are hella expensive. So I only got two um ever and then i just <laughs> never did again because they're so expensive and i just want i want to spend my money on other things because eventually i had to start paying them for them for myself by myself but you can get some really nice synthetic ones as well um they're just like a little they degrade faster than a real hair wig because um there's kind of two main groups of wigs you can get synthetic which is like a plastic or real hair, which is human hair into, made into a wig. So the great thing about human hair is like, you can heat it. Um, it won't degrade in the same way like that a uh, synthetic hair would, where this one's not too bad, but if I washed it, it'd be better. But you see how the ends start to look like um, they're dead or they're, they're damaged. That's the synthetic hair like it's damaged from, it doesn't damage in the same way that real hair does. It's not from dyeing it or something. It's from like friction. So like combing it, putting it in that bun over and over again and then not properly combing it. Like when I say combing it, it's like the way you comb it. It's, you can't just rip on it. You have to like be more careful about just more so detangling it on my lipstick I have to do. But the hair, you do eventually have to get a new one because like anytime you comb your hair, the hair has to fall out, like it will. It's just the way it is. So eventually you just have like a thinning wig. So you have to get a new one. Um, on the other hand, synthetics way less expensive. Um, 
and it doesn't get tangled in the same way real hair does. Oh my God, real hair, like when you wash it, <sighs> detangling that is a nightmare. Whereas like synthetic will get tangled and be frustrating, but it's not the same degree. Um, but it does degrade, synthetic does degrade faster. So after that, I went back to the woman a few times and got more wigs from her. The thing about buying them in store is they really jack up the price and no shade to this woman. I can't talk and do this. Putting on lipstick is like performing surgery. <laughs> but yeah, no shade to this woman at all. Yeah, it's way more expensive. So I, it's around 2000, so year of university, 2011? 2010, 2011-ish, I started buying them online. I bought it online for the first time. And they like weren't, it wasn't even good, but it, at the same time it was. Like it's, looking at the wig now, I'm like, that's obviously such a wig, like obviously. But it was just so long and luxur luxurious and all that stuff, like I didn't care. So I started buying them online from like Chinese websites that like cosplay and stuff's more regular there so they had like all these different wigs you could get and i would buy just regular brown ones but then sometimes like i have like i have so many different wigs i have so many like i don't even know i'm gonna put my glasses on so i can see at least would buy them online but then i would buy like fun ones like mermaid hair yeah i saved a bunch of pictures so here's a slideshow of all <laughs> not even all the different wigs i've had but a bunch of different wigs i've had So slowly I started moving into buying them from like designated like actual websites that sell wigs specifically. And so then the quality kind of went up and over the years I've kind of refined the style and look of wigs I like. I guess for the makeup part of this video, um, I don't wear fake eyelashes, I don't draw my eyebrows. I do have fake eyebrows that I might go grab in a second just to show you. I just bought because at one point I just, I was just like, I just wanna have eyebrows. So I, I bought them online. They're like real hair, fake ones. I haven't worn them once because they just look so costumey and fake to me. And I'm sure they don't actually, but I've just become so used to how my face looks that like when I put on things that are so fake in my opinion, and like this is from someone saying who wears a wig, but whatever. When I put on something like that, it's just, I'm like, I don't need this. Like it doesn't matter. But with that being said, like I do buy wigs like with the blunt bangs and stuff like that. So it kind of just covers it up and I'm also, in general just lazy so like by having having the bangs having these like thick rim glasses it distracts the eye so that people aren't just constantly like what's weird your face is weird you know <laughs> i don't do fake eyelashes or eyebrows because i just like simply i don't care enough yeah so that's kind of where my wig evolution has got to um, I'll put the links to where I buy them right now, um, where the brown one is from and the blonde one that I'll, I'm gonna put on in a bit is from, um, because this is a get ready with me. So I'm gonna do the whole full experience. Yeah, so those are from two different Etsy shops. So that's kind of where I am now with it is I just buy them off Etsy. Oh, the other thing um, I should say too, the other part of this story, my story, is that um, I have grown hair since I was 17. So that's another weird part of alopecia is you can lose all your hair. And then I started regrowing it eventually. Um, parts of my eyebrows and eyelashes have come in. I've grown full pubes, full leg hair, and then it's fallen out again. Um, and it's been like that since 2007 where uh, I'll, I'll grow some in and I'll lose it all. It's never fully come back, especially on my head. It's there's always been patches. There's one point in my life, and I'll put some pictures in that like it was very close to coming back, and that is when I did acupuncture actually. And for whatever reason, that really seemed to help. Um, I'm not super into pseudoscience, like I am, and I'm not into pseudoscience. Um, I do think it is more the power of the mind, um, but that in itself, like if it helps you heal, whatever, do what works for you. I really have to water my plants, but it's fine. They're fine. Yeah, but then uh, I have the. 2017 uh 2017 it all fell out and um it hasn't come back so that can happen um there is like what male pattern baldness is i think it's a in the realm of alopecia but what happens is it scars after so your little like hair follicle area 
where their hair follicles coming out of that area scars over um so then your hair doesn't grow back so that it might be what i have um it might not be i've like never haven't gone ever had someone test it there is so much i could cover in this video like it could be an hour long so some treatments i've done some treatments i've done over the years um they're horrible the options for treatments like are just horrible so there's um <laughs> Uh, I gotta remember what they were. It's min minoxidil, I think. And it's like Rogaine, but it's like, it was amped up. Um, so I did that. Uh, it didn't do anything. It's like a cream. I just put it on my head. Um, so these are like the medical treatments. I've done some pseudoscience treatments, which I've already mentioned. Um, and then other science ones I did, science, other um, <laughs> medical ones I did was cortisone, cortisone shots in my scalp. So that is a steroid and they do it because they hope it promotes um, growth. Um, no, it did not. Uh, they're very painful. Um, so after the second treatment, my dermatologist, so I had a new dermatologist, dermatologist at this point. This one was amazing, a million chef kisses. Um, she was great. She's very knowledgeable about new um, options for treatment that come out. But yeah, the cortisone did dick all. And another option that was available <laughs> was they paint something like similar to poison ivy onto your scalp and it's supposed to distract the white blood cells. So they attack that instead and then you can start growing hair. But then, you know, instead you just um, have poison ivy on your scalp all the time. Um, yeah, so my mom vetoed that. <laughs> Thank you, Colleen. Another more current option, and when I say current, this is probably three or four years ago, was a rheumatoid arthritis treatment that they uh, they developed. So it was to treat rheumatoid, but I don't think it, I, I don't know if it worked for that, but they found that in patients with alopecia. Oh my God. Oh, the audio is going to be messed up. The people who had alopecia who were getting the treatment for rheumatoid, um, their hair started growing. And why is because um, it, the treatment, because rheumatoid is linked to the immune system, the treatment essentially just completely suppressed your immune system. And therefore your white blood cells aren't attacking your hair follicles, so your hair grows back in. So essentially you don't have a functioning immune system at all. I'd rather be bald. <laughs> I'd rather have that little sliver of immune system function that I get currently than have absolutely none. And again, no shade to people who, who do get it. And I, I feel so like, oh, horrible that they feel they have to. Because you're fucking awesome the way you are. Um, but yeah, I did not get that treatment. No. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, those are the main medical ones that I know about currently. There could definitely be new ones that have come out and I just don't know about. Because most of them, most of them are never treating the actual problem. I don't think medical science at this point really knows what to do. So they just come up with these band-aid effects that treat um, the symptom and not the root cause and then give you a, a new symptom. <laughs> so I did put online asking if anybody ever had any questions about my alopecia. Shoot. So I'm going to answer those and I'm also going to answer just like some questions I've got over the years that I can even remember. Uh, this was a question from Danielle. Love you. She asked four questions in a row and uh, <laughs> love her. Uh, are you chilly because of the alopecia or is that a unique Juliaism? So all my friends will know that I am a cold person. I'm always cold. I think I've said it a hundred times in this YouTube channel as well. I'm just, I'm fucking cold most of the time. So right now I really want to put my wig on. Um, not honestly because of the camera, like I'm past that point already. Like it was the initial and then five minutes after that. And now I'm just like, Hey, don't care anymore that's how easy it can be once you put something out there it's out there it's done it's over with you can't go back but yeah so i do want to put my wig back on uh or like a hoodie or something because i'm cold most of your heat comes out of your head so i don't have all of that insulation that's supposed to be on your head or on my arms or legs or body so like yeah i'm cold a lot of the time because of that with that being said, I'm going to put my hair on because this is a get ready with me and that's what I do. Also from Danielle, do you shower with your, ig with your wig on and shampoo it? 
Um, no. Um, so to wash your wig, you basically just, you put it in the sink and you like, you run a little bath for it of like barely warm water, like lukewarm water. You put a little bath for it, you put in sh some shampoo. And then you put your wig in. You don't do this, you just gently do that because like I said, friction is what causes um, like most of the wear and tear on your wig, the synthetic wig. And then uh, comb it out, oh no. And then rinse that and then put conditioner in. And then, um, and then I comb it out, and then I rinse it, and then I comb it again. Um, and that's why I'm always like, I haven't washed my hair because I don't like doing it. I'm lazy. It's like, if I can go a little bit longer without doing it, then I will. With that being said, I have brought it into the shower with me. I've done that whole kind of process, just like standing up, holding the wig under the water, like shampooing, then combing, and doing all that because like say I'm in a rush and I'm like, oh, I just wanna get this washed and like leave again. Have you had the pleasure of pulling out a grotesque ingrown hair? Yes, for sure, yes. Yeah, I did grow hair and pubes and stuff at one point. So I definitely had ingrowns and like weird stuff like that. Had the hair pulling that out of your butt crack after you shower or as you shower because it comes out and girls know. Guys probably do too, but for girls, it's like there's a long fucking ass hair you're pulling out of your crack. And the last one, does alopecia cause you to be a crazy skilled sewer? Obviously, yeah, that's it. That's actually why I'm good. It's not, it's not like having learned the skill and then working at it over the years and applying that. No, I was just born with alopecia. And so I was also born being an excellent sewer. <laughs> also, thank you, Danielle. Rebecca, were you born with it? So I have covered that. Yes, but it didn't really show up until I was eight and I don't know why. And that's really all I can say. <laughs> like, yes, I think I probably did have it like in me at, um, for whatever reason, but it didn't show up until my immune system started malfunctioning and why that happened, I don't know for sure. She also said, you will look sexy with no hair. Um, and again, thank you. I'm not good at winking, but I'm gonna keep doing it until I am. And then my friend Jenny, how many nights a week does Eric, my fiance, wear your wigs for your freaky nook fetish sesh? That's none of your damn business, Jennifer. No, in all honesty, he's never uh, worn one of my wigs. One of my exes did when I did his makeup. So, hey, maybe that'll be a video. But on the whole, when it's hair I wear every day, um, I don't love other people wearing it. Um, only because like when they put it on, it's kind of your identity. So you see someone else wearing it and it's just, I don't know, it just feels kind of weird. Also, Julie's nook has headbands now. So just a little lip line. Check out my Etsy store, check out my Etsy store. So those were the main questions that I want to answer right now. Like this video, my camera's dying. It's way too long as it is, so. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap it up. But if you in the future want to know more, you want me to do another video like this where I just like tell you things about alopecia or like if you want me to do a video solely like here are all these funny stories I have throughout the years with alopecia. Love to, would love to. Like I have some like, I have some funny ones already in my head that I'm like, yeah, that was a funny moment that was like uncomfortable and weird and okay. So we are ready, we have gotten ready and we're ready to go out into the world and not just like go into our bathroom immediately after and take off the makeup. But anyway, thank you everyone who watches this um, for listening. Hello, so my camera fully died. Um, so I'm using my phone, so if it looks different, the angle's different, that's why. But anyway, thank you for everyone watching. Um, this next week is gonna have a lot more bald in it. Okay, that's all I'm gonna tell you. But get ready to see my bald fucking head a lot. And enjoy, enjoy that bald head. Because it's a part of the world now, as it should be, as it belongs there. Kudos to every fucking person who has alopecia or something they're like just deeply vulnerable about and they go outside just like fully bald. Like I am not there yet. I hope to one day get there. But anyway, kudos to you. You're amazing. You're beautiful. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah to you. Subscribe to my channel, like it, hit the bell notification, follow me on social media, check out my Etsy page. Uh, new videos this week, a bunch. 
all at once and then probably none for like two weeks because I'll be like, that's enough for now. Um, it's holiday season. I deserve to relax. So do you. I need to water my plants. I'm gonna go do that now. You're great. You look sexy. Stay golden. See you more this week. Finger guns. Okay, bye.